a very low place. And you'll find him in Psalm 130, please. Psalm 130. You know, friend, tonight people are craving and people are crying out and wondering what's wrong with them. And the one thing they fail to realize tonight that the only answer that there is for their problems is the Lord Jesus. In Psalm 130, this is what we read. The psalmist says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord, more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that reading of his own precious truth. As I have said already when we begin Psalm 130, listening to the psalmist, we find the psalmist in a very deep place. We find him in deep distress. The first words he breathes are, O oh, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. And when we listen to the psalmist in the beginning of the psalm, You'll find not only is he in deep distress tonight, but the psalmist is in a dark place, and life is very difficult. You know, tonight that's where sometimes, sometimes God has to bring us to that place. Because it's when we're down in that place, and it's when life becomes difficult, and life is dark, sometimes it's there where we begin to think about God. I was conducting a gospel mission in April a tent mission for Koch Baptist Church. On the first Tuesday night of that mission, there was a young married mother. And on the Sunday prior to that meeting, in fact, it would have been the opening Sunday night of that mission, that young lady in her mid-twenties was in a very dark place. in the place and in the point of despair. And she happened to come across a lady the next day, and she was sharing with her the problem where she was. And her friend invited her to go to the mission. During the course of that mission, God spoke to that young lady, and in her testimony, because she was baptized back in September time, and she gave a word of testimony, and she said, in that tent that night, George McConnell, she said, spoke in such a way, she believed that I could see clean through her. Everything that was going on in her life, God revealed it to her. And God brought before her the real problem that was going on in her life. 
That night after the meeting was over, she required to speak to me. And after counseling that young lady, I had the joy of pointing her to the Lord. Do you know what she said? What was wrong with me in the nights leading up to that mission? God was troubling in me. The suffering that I was endured, enduring was the convicting power of God, the Holy Ghost. And I didn't know what she says. Until that night, God spoke to her heart. Not only did she get saved, but on the closing night of the mission, the husband got saved. And both of them are going on with the Lord. Ah, but friends, I'll tell you this, God had to bring her to a low place. It's powerful tonight how low sometimes God has to bring people to get people to listen. You know what the Bible says about mankind tonight? Men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. And Job 15 verse 16 says, He drinketh up iniquity just like water. You know, friends, like man's heart is so dark. Man's heart is so wicked. Man's heart is so evil. Sometimes God has to do terrible things to get us to listen. And sometimes God has to do terrible things to get our attention. Because, friends... The human heart is so dark and so wicked. We don't want to listen to God. Do you know those people today live as if God doesn't exist? People live today and they die today thinking that there's no God to meet. And sometimes when God speaks, God has to speak very loud. You see, friends, this evening what people don't realize tonight, the devil has their minds blinded. You read 2 Corinthians 4, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Do you know something? There's something the devil doesn't want you to see. Do you know what the devil doesn't want you to see tonight? The devil doesn't want you to see your sin. Because the devil knows things. You don't know this, but the devil knows that if you see your sin, your heart will be troubled. The devil knows that if you see your sin, your mind will be troubled. Because the devil knows tonight, if you see your sin, the big possibility is that you'll turn to the Lord and be saved. You know, friend, men live today, and God is not in all their thoughts. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. But you know what happens? Sometimes God fills a man. Sometimes God will let a man go his own way and let him fill himself with all the darkness of sin in the world so that the sin that pleases him begins to pain him. You see, in Psalm 130, here's a man and he's down. Here's a man and he's distressed. And here's a man tonight. The one thing that's on his mind is his sin. Dear unsafe friend, that's what needs to be in your mind tonight, your sin. Your sin tonight is your greatest problem. And unless you recognize tonight that your sin is your greatest problem, you'll never be saved. And God does terrible things to bring your sin before you. 
Do you remember the Philippian jailer in Acts 16? Two minutes to midnight, he had no time for God, no thought for God, no time for his soul, or no thought for his soul. And yet God done something powerful, friend, that at, five, at two minutes past twelve, he was on his knees crying, What must I do to be saved? Do you remember the man in Mark chapter 2, the man sick of the palsy, there he was in, in a bed of sickness, and he was brought to Christ, and on his bed of sickness, God said to him, the Lord Jesus said to him, thy sins be forgiven thee, and then it was there where God brought a sin before him. Do you know, sometimes God, love, will have to put you in a bed of sickness. There's people in the attended churches for years, churches for years, sit under the gospel for years, for years, for years, and they don't listen. And sometimes God has to put them in a bed of sickness. I could take you to my mother's bed tonight. One Saturday morning, we thought she was dying, we believed she was dying, and I'll tell you this, she believed it herself she was dying. And after 32 years of praying for her, God opened the door for me to speak to her. And my mother in her own bedroom, in her own bed, friends, so far down, it was there where God had to take her. To get her to listen, because I'll tell you, she wouldn't have listened any other time. And God, through me, brought her sin before her. And there, on that bed of sickness, she sought the Lord and she found him. And here's a man in Psalm 130, and he's troubled. He's conscious of his sin tonight, and he's afraid of his sin tonight, just as you need to be afraid of your sin. Do you know what he says in, in, in verse number 3? He says this tonight. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Do you know what God wants you to see tonight, unsafe friend? This is what God wants you to see tonight. God, you, God wants you to look at his heart. God wants you to look at his heart towards sin tonight. God's heart towards sin. You see, in Psalm 130, and verse number 3, we can see tonight what was troubling this man. We can see tonight what this man was afraid of. This man tonight was troubled. And this man tonight was afraid of his sin. And where his sin placed him before God. It concerned him greatly. And dear unsaved friend in this meeting tonight, you need to start thinking of where your sin places you before a holy God. He recognizes the sinfulness of man. He recognizes the holiness of God. And he sees his hopeless state tonight. God's heart towards sin. Do you remember the days before the flood? We read these words, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth, and that every imagination of his heart was evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man upon the earth, and it grieved him at his heart that I will destroy man of whom I have created. Uh, listen to me, sinner friend, tonight. God doesn't ignore sin. And God won't sweep sin under the carpet. God won't pass sin away like our governments do today. God punishes sin. And God hates sin. God despises sin. And friend, God sees the, the sin that's in your life. Listen to it. Don't you ignore this truth. It's Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 20. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And listen to your own safe friend. God holds you to account tonight. 
God tonight is holding you to account concerning your sin. Every sin that you commit, God's taken record of it. Imagine tonight, just imagine tonight. Imagine tonight you were to die. Imagine tonight you were killed going home in the car. Imagine tonight, imagine tonight this evening, going to bed and you just pass away without warning, without even a pain or you just die. And you die in that sin of yours. I'll tell you, friend, it'll be then when it'll be too late when you learn about God's heart towards sin. Let me teach you tonight how God's heart is towards sin. You go to the book of the Revelation, chapter 20, you see the lake of fire. That's God's heart towards sin. Go you to Luke chapter 16, and you see the rich man in hell. That's God's heart towards sin. You go to Luke 23, and you look to the Calvary's cross tonight. That's God's heart towards sin tonight. God hates sin. And what we have to remember this evening is every one of us was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And in our wee province tonight, and in our wee land tonight, we're all brainwashed that we're born Protestants, and we're born Catholics, and we're born orange men, and we're born black men. I'm telling you the truth, you were born sinners, and none of us were born a Baptist. And none of us were born free Presbyterians or Church of Ireland or any other nonsense like this. Born sinners. Born condemned under the mighty anger of God. And tonight, dear friend, God's heart towards sin is a horrible thought this evening. You imagine tonight on the great and terrible day of judgment, how will you stand? Psalm 1, 5 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. I'll tell you, child, unsafe friend, that should trouble you tonight, and that should frighten you tonight, because being a Baptist and being a churchgoer and being an orange man and being a Hibernian, whatever way you place yourself, doesn't count with God. doesn't count. Think of the days of the flood. That's God's heart towards sin. Think of Sodom and Gomorrah tonight. God's heart towards sin. A Church of Ireland clergyman, a true Christian, told the story of a young lady who was a member of his congregation. A young lady that was born into a Christian home. She was one of three. Everyone in the family was saved but her. Many times she was brought under serious, serious conviction. Many nights she was troubled. Many a time her parents used to plead with her about coming to Christ. And persistently and persistently she refused to heed the admonitions that was addressed to her. He said, if any young lady knew the gospel, it was this young lady. At 29 years of age, this young lady took very seriously ill. It was soon discovered that all the medical science that's about today, and even about back then, was hopeless to prolong her life. Even in that condition, her family pleaded with her. He 
even in that condition, this clergyman spoke to her. In this condition, everybody prayed for her. Time and time and time again, she kept refusing. Time and time again, friends, time and time again, God gave her opportunities. Time and time again she was troubled. Time and time again she felt the convicting power of God, the Holy Spirit, pleading with her never-dying soul. Until one night, the family gathered around the bed, She was sound asleep, this wee lassie was, 29. Sound asleep. Sometime during the night when the family was gathered still around the bed, she wakened up with a frightened look in her face. She said to her mother, Mother, I've had a vivid dream, Mother. What do you mean, dear, the mother says. Mommy, I've had a very vivid dream. And in fact, I feel a strange sense of a strange presence in this room. And I can hear a voice saying to me, Mommy, Read Ezekiel. Read Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Mommy, what does it say? That's what I hear this voice saying. Ezekiel 7, 8 and 9. Mommy, get the Bible. Get the Bible and, and read it to me. What does it say? What does it say, Mommy? The mommy got the Bible. And the mummy turned to Ezekiel. Turned to Ezekiel chapter 7. And began to read verse 8 and 9. And mind you, when the mother started to read, her voice began to break. And her lips began to tremble. She read these words. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. That young girl, 29 years of age, looked into her mother's face, and the mother saw, said that the horror that was on her face was terrible. It would have frightened you. And she put her head in the pillow again, and within seconds, she was in eternity. Now listen, sinner friend, tonight. Let's set up tonight. God is real. And sin is real. And God's anger is real. God's word's real. 
Now, you in the right mind tonight would never want God to speak to you like that for the last time. And here's a young lady tonight, time and time and time and time again, God spoke to her and God troubled her about her sin, but you wouldn't listen. And God just took her. The way she chose. Many times tonight has God spoke to you. How many times has God been merciful to you and he's troubled you about your sin? You might believe this tonight, my dear friend. God's heart towards sin is one of hatred. One of judgment. But there's something else he discovered tonight. It wasn't only God's heart towards sin, but God's heart towards sinners. In Psalm 130, and verse number 4, this is what we read tonight. But, but there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Thank God tonight, that's God's heart towards sinners. And this psalmist saw at this moment, even though God's heart is one of hatred for sinner, sin, God's heart is one of hope for sinners. He could look into and look up this evening and see into the heart of God, God's heart for sinners. Friend, tonight, Take a good look to the cross this evening and see God's heart for sinners. We read tonight in Romans 5 and 8, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When I look into God's heart tonight, I see God's hatred poured upon sin. But I see hope provided for the sinner. Listen, dear unsaved friend, do you know what you read in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him in repentance. For I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, saith the Lord, Ezekiel 18 and 3, 23. And friend, tonight, God loves you. In spite of what you've done, friend, God doesn't close his heart to sinners. This man receiveth sinners. The Lord Jesus Christ tonight is the one that God sent into this world to die for you because he loves you. You know, the Lord Jesus is the one this evening that is able to forgive you for your sin. Because there is for forgiveness with him. And during the Second World War, the Japanese captured 70 Scottish soldiers, sent them to labor to build a bridge across what is known as the River Kwai. The way that treated them was terrible starved them, gave them very little water, and made them labor in the burning heat. One day the Japanese soldiers came along and started counting the shovels, and there should have been thirty. One was missing. The German captors lined all these men up, the seven of them up, and one boy pulled a machine gun and was about to mow them down. One man stepped forward and says, hey, it's my fault. I lost the shovel. The German or the Japanese captor, the man who was over these men, 
Do you know what he did? He took a shovel and he beat that man to a pulp and killed him. The rest of the Scottish fellows picked him up when they took him away and they buried him. And the Japanese man went away back again and counted the shovels. And there wasn't one missing at all. They miscounted it. One innocent man died to save the other. When the Allies came and took over the camp, the poor Scottish soldiers were nothing more than skeletons with breath. That's the way they were left. It was the Americans that came in first and made them all line up. The, the, the Japanese captors made them all line up in front of the men that they had ill-treated. But something wonderful happened. Those Scottish soldiers that these men treated so wickedly and evilly, this is what they said. We don't want any more death. We don't want any more pain. What we want to show is forgiveness. In spite of the way in which they treated us. And many of those Japanese soldiers were broken to tears when they saw the forgiveness of those who they ill-treated. Every sinner that comes to Christ, in spite of what they've done, will always find there's forgiveness for them. Unsaved friend tonight, there is forgiveness for thee. And if you come tonight and repent of your sin, you too will know that forgiveness. God's heart towards sin. God's heart towards sinners. Friend, I trust tonight You'll be wise and come to the Savior and make no delay. Let's bear in a wee word of prayer together. Father God, tonight we just look to Thee and we just ask Thee this evening to really, Lord, come now and, Lord, speak. Lord, we just turn to Thee just now. Pray, Lord, that in these closing moments we just simply seek thy face and pray, O oh God, do that work that only thou canst do. Because we know, dear Lord, that salvation is of thee. We leave it all into thy hands. And now, Lord, we would ask thee to part us in thy fear and with thy blessing and take us to our homes now in safety and help us to be conscious that we must all prepare to meet God and that Christ died and died to save. We pray in our Saviour's precious name. Amen.